Hey everyone, welcome back to another 31 Minute Podcast. Jordan's not here today, he's away on holidays playing golf. We've got Jackson here, he doesn't have a microphone. Oh. <laughs> doesn't have a microphone, so it's just me. A couple of quick things. Uh, been a bit of talk about politics. Um, I, I just, you know, lots of people, the message I reckon, I don't know, what Jack, 100 people, 200 people. Um, and the reason, I'm still obviously going to be a real estate agent, but I just love to get involved somehow because I can't stand the lack of transparency and the agenda that's going on. It's craziness. It's like there's no common sense. So anyway, I'm meeting with Joel Jamal on Thursday and we're going to have some lunch with someone that works with him. I'm going to see where this goes. But I'm pretty serious. I want to save this country for summer. And you, Jackson. <laughs> um Anyway, I'll see what I can do to help. Uh, the, the mindset of success, uh, no, the mindset of achievement is something I feel inspired to talk about today for a couple of reasons. Achieving stuff is not easy. And when you set goals, there's all this enthusiasm around it. And then you're like, cool, I've written my goal list, but what then? And how many times have you written a goal list and either, you know, been keen for a few days and forgotten about them, or they seem like they're never coming. And why do some people achieve their goals and not others, and other people just live this really sort of unfulfilling life? Because everything's by choice. So you're choosing the outcome of everything that you want. But it's whether you are prepared to change along the way to get that goal. Because when you set something, you're reaching for it. So if you want to be, let's say you want to be a millionaire and you have a thousand bucks in the bank, there's a bit of a gap between there and where you want to go. Not just physically, but, but vibrationally as well. So energetically, there's a big gap. You have to learn to operate at a slightly higher frequency than where you have been. And just that alone takes a lot of adjusting. So the mindset of achievement is not about, yes, I'm gonna achieve this goal, yes, let's go. That's very short lived. It's the, the maintaining the desire way after the enthusiasm of the moment has gone. It's not, it's really not an easy thing to do because that it might be a 10 year process and we get all pumped about the actual task of setting a goal. But what about the mindset of maintaining it? That's where your bridge is. So that's like daily tasks. And something that happened recently, we went to Fiji, I got sick. There's many people have heard about a thousand times now. Um, Jackson got sick after that. Someone got sick, everyone. And I came back and I started, is that microphone working now, Jack? Yeah, it's working oh, now. Oh yeah, hello, welcome. Welcome, hello. Yeah. Um, how was Fiji? It was good. Yeah? It was a nice little bonding trip. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, good. Yeah, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So I came back and the ice bath broke as well. So the, the ice bath I have from Fjord, they gave us some instructions and I didn't really follow them. I didn't clean it out properly. I didn't do this, didn't do that. And it broke. The new part's on its way. And it got so um, dirty, so dirty and clogged up. Brent, the, our plumber, come and said, mate, that was just disgusting. Um, so there was about two weeks where I did an ice bath at all because of sickness and it wasn't working. And I've just started a couple of days ago doing it again. And it's like I've gone back to the beginning. So the six minute ice baths, they're really not that enjoyable at the moment. Whereas before I was on such a roll two, three times a day after the sauna, it was almost like enjoyable. Like it, it was, uh, uh, what would you call it? Like I was looking forward to, I'd always look forward to them and it'd be a bit blissful. Now it's a bit of a punish to be brutally honest with you. So this morning, good example, wake up, 4.50 or something, in bed, 
jumped on my phone and I'm like, I've got to do the ice bath soon. And um, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I don't really have to. And then I'm like, yeah, you do. Because I want to become, I want to go to Norway end of next year and I want to go do the ice baths and the saunas and all that sort of stuff over there and um, really push the limits if I can. And I thought to myself, no one knows if I do it or not, but I do. And how committed am I to the outcome? So if I want to become, if I want my breathing to be better, if I want to withstand, you know, 20 minutes in the ice bath, half an hour, if I want to become an expert at this thing, I can't get in my own way. And I think we let ourselves off so easily. Like this morning, Jackson, would you have, would it make any difference to your life if I did an ice bath this morning or not? I'd have no idea. You'd have no idea. No. That's right. And you probably think, oh, yeah, dad's great at ice bars. He's committed. He's disciplined. What a lie, though. Mm. What a lie. Because the discipline is in the moment. The discipline isn't what you did yesterday or the day before. It's what are you going to do today? So if I want to become, like I do like Wim Hof. I sort of want to become similar to him. Not not as eccentric, but similar. Like I love his mindset. And you, you use these people for inspiration and things like this, even in politics. When I get into politics, I'm not going to take a wage. I will get into it one day. I'm not going to take a wage. I will not be paid to do politics. And... That's because I deeply resonate with, I want to save this country. I want fierce leaders in this country. Not that I'm a fierce leader. I imagine there was 50 fierce leaders of in parliament. Imagine what the country would be. Is there any fierce leaders in parliament? Yeah, there are. Malcolm Roberts, Senator Antic, um, Babbitt, Pauline Hanson, whether people like, like it or not, she says what she thinks. I like people that say what they think, whether you agree with it or not. I love people who speak the truth and say and stand up. She just wants a good country. Anyone who wants a good country, let's not get into the politics podcast today. But I, I like that. So I want to do it and not draw a wage. I want to do it and do it for the passion of it, to see what I can become in that arena. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you don't get into it. Someone yesterday said that would be the worst thing to do. And I'm like, not really, not if I'm going to like get in the way of some of this ridiculousness, like farmers, for instance. I want to help the farmers be the highest producing prosperous people in this land. Like that's what we, that's what we need, this beautiful food, not dominated by the rules, regulations, supermarkets, profit margin. I, anyway, I could go on about this all day. Let's get back to the art of achievement or the mindset of achievement. So this morning is a moment in time. I'm in bed, felt great, thinking, my, talking myself out of the ice bath that I haven't, I've only done a couple of days in a row and it's been difficult. I have to say it's been difficult. The first one, I text Tommy and I said I was shaking the whole time. You know, go back two weeks ago, I could do 10 minutes and just loving it in there absorbed, you know, in a different frequency, pumped. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that. Um, hang on, Tara's FaceTiming me. Let's see. Just doing your podcast. Oh, okay. Are you having a here or at the office? Here. Oh, okay. Bye. Sorry, Tara just facing timing me from bed. I mind summer on Tuesday mornings because she goes and gets her shoulder worked on. But the moment in time now is what do I want to become? And that's the question. Because to achieve something you haven't achieved before, you have to become a different person than you have before, period. You have to become a different person than you have before. So how serious am I about doing that? Who do I want to become? Do I want to become the Matt Steinway where I haven't been before that's a fierce internal self-leader, myself, like saying, no, no. Get up. Your commitment has, is ice bath, six minutes, morning. Get up, then go do cardio. I take a few journal notes. Then go um, cardio or red light bed. I do a red light bed every second day now because I think every day was sort of too much for my skin. So every so I do cardio this morning. So I did cardio. And you know what I did in the cardio as well, Jack, this morning? I know we had to do a podcast. 
I know we had to move my I had no I had to mind summer. I got to 15 minutes. Guess what I said to myself? I can stop now. Yeah. I'll do the other 15 minutes later. That's what I said. Who am I becoming here? I was going to say, that's nothing like you. That's not like me. At all. No. That's the mindset of a loser. Do you feel like it's because you got sick in Fiji and had that time off the ice bath? Yeah, I've gone back. It crept in. I've gone backwards. Mm. It's so easy to go backwards, Jack. And that's what I'm saying. Because your resilience is built one step forward at a time. So when you see somebody run a 100-mile race, they've done 400... 20 mile races to get to that point. It's like holding my breath now. I'm not, a, I'm not amazing at it. When I, I do the Wim Hof beginner breathing as soon as I wake up every day. I go do hydrate, so I drink. I put some Tommy stuff in there, lemon, apple cider, drink it, straight into breathing. When I was doing this in the beginning, I was so bad at it, I could hold my breath, I reckon, for 20 seconds. And I'd be <laughs> <gasps> like this. <coughs> no joke. I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like it at all. And it was an effort. And I've tried to do the breathing so much over time. And I've tried to like, and it's just, and I just stopped doing it because it's like a gym workout. And I just didn't want to. I couldn't be bothered half the time. I didn't want to sit there. I want to be active. But now I can do it. I'm still not amazing at it, but I'm a million times better than I was. And now I can like think about my diaphragm breathing. But this is like after a year, maybe, not quite, a, a year of doing it every day. So who am I becoming? So if I want to become Wim Hof, sort of, I don't want to become Wim Hof. I want to become able like him. So if I sit in, I, I always remember on one of his videos, he said when he got to 60, he did 60 minutes in the ice bath, 61, 61 minutes, 62, 62 minutes. Now he's done so much he doesn't do it anymore like that. But I want to do that. Like I want my body, because when you get in the cold, all this heat shock proteins get released. Your body goes into this contraction, but you can stabilize it with your breathing and your mental presence. Why does that excite you so much? Because it's good for you. Because you can feel you feel like it's, or like you know that it's make like you're progressing as a person. Yeah, mm. stress is the only thing that makes you better. Mm. Stress is the only thing that makes you reach like it's it it when you stress the body you have to repair it again so it's like a muscle go to the gym that's why you saw my hamstrings are a bit sore today i did legs on sunday and i'm like okay that's a good workout but if i went and did nothing uh, if i went and got no, no soreness well i didn't really stress myself that much mm. a diamond is made under under pressure and stress say, pressure makes diamonds yeah think about all of it when you go to war I haven't been to war, but if you're in the army and you've been to four wars, would you want to go to the next war with that guy or the other guy who studied it? It's like it's obviously the guy who's been there. It's like yeah. when you, you I remember you saying something about it. Would you rather go like on a sail with like the old crusty, yeah, the old crusty guy. sail guy that's been through every storm, or like yeah. or just the other person? Yeah. I, I went on a boat with Shelley's dad oh, many times, but I go on a boat with Shelley's dad. He's been in boating his whole life. He's not a sailor but he's like growing up fishing and all that. Like he's, he's just so able it's not funny. So Shelly's my ex-wife. When I was on the boat with him, I'd always feel like he's got it covered. Doesn't matter what we were doing, where we were. I'm like, he just knows his stuff and you just see it. And, he, and he's really like sit on that side of the boat, sit there, not bossy, but like he's got everything arranged, very organized guy. Mm. Pull in, pull in the jetty. I went on a boat with my mate uh, a couple of years ago now and he bought a boat. He's Italian and not really a, a, a water person. Mm. He crashed it into the jetty. In the, he goes, took me out at like 10 o'clock at night. Crashed it into the jetty. It was real windy. It was the worst. I got off <laughs> and I, I got off at a different thing and, and went. And I said, I'm not staying on this boat with you. We're going to sink. But that's what I'm saying. I want to become that person in life. Do so you feel like I was going to ask, like, like talking about Ray, um, Shelley's uh, dad, do you feel like that's why – like you're successful in business because it's like you you, you got the experience yeah. like you can tell like like you feel safe with him on a boat people kind of feel safe with you dealing with their house yeah. yeah and it, yeah exactly and even my team when the market changes i go like jordan says i just put my helmet on walk in with my sword and go like, let's go we're doing this thing mm. it's not that i enjoy it but i'm like 
okay, I, I can rise to this occasion, but you can't rise to an occasion if you haven't been there before. So that's why training is so important. So I'm training myself every day to become someone different. So that's why I got in the Stairmaster this morning. That's why I get in the ice bath this morning. Like even with family, Jack, like I have to be better at family. I'm trying, like minding summer, doing, but Tara is very understanding. I'm never going to be a master at it. I, and I don't pretend to be. But at work and providing, that's I see that as my role, you know, big time. So that's... I. I push myself hard, prospecting. If I haven't got enough results, I can link it to prospecting every time. Have I been on the phone enough? Have I been talking to enough people? Have I got the team running right? All of these sorts of things. So myself, the, the mindset of achievement or anybody, you Jack, the mindset of achievement, if you're going to do it, do it well. Who do you want to become? What's your goal? I only have a few goals. But if money's one of them, you can't waste it. But... Jordan and I talk about money a lot and vibrationally you live in direct reflection to what you're used to with money. So if you've got not much money in the bank, if you, if, so let's say someone doesn't, is used to not having much money and you give them 50 grand, I'll guarantee in a month's time it's gone because they've never managed it. They've never learnt because they've got it. Like it's boom. And they don't, they don't understand it. But if you've built it dollar by dollar over time through discipline and you've got to a point where you're used to saving it, like Bay and Flora. Bay is my 10-year-old. Flora is a 12-year-old. Bay has like 10 grand in the bank. You've got more money than me. Yeah, Bay's got 10 grand in the bank. Yeah. He's get, he saves his birthday money. Flora, she's out buying makeup at Sephora. She's probably got about 50 grand of makeup and stuff in the room. They're so different it's not funny. But vibrationally, that's what they're used to. Flora's used to having... Well, she gets pocket money. She gets 40-something dollars pocket money every week, but she's used to just living on that. Mm. Bay has so much money, he could start lending it to his friends for interest <laughs> and he'd probably do that. But you know why he wants to buy a house? So his discipline at 10 years old is incredible. Mm. Will he buy a house? Yeah. Yeah, because he's got that energetic resonance, that discipline. So in the moment is where discipline is really seen. This morning for me, bed, ice bath. I could have skipped it and just gone to cardio. But I know I would have let myself off. And you've got to be your own judge. It's do you really want it enough that you're prepared to say, well, I committed to this, I'm doing it. I committed to this, I'm doing it. It's like gut health. I talk to Tommy a lot about gut health every day because I'm interested in it. I want to get healthier as I get older. You know, some people really want better gut but they're just not prepared to – Eat the pods. Oh, I don't like the taste of the pods. Who cares? There's hundreds of ingredients there you'll never eat usually. So you can't get it anywhere else. Oh, I don't want to stick to Tommy's meal plan because it's boring. Well, you're not serious about developing what that guy knows. Because if Tommy says to me, do this, 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 I don't skip it at all. Like me lashing out now is having two pieces of paleo bread at night with my dinner. That's me lashing out. <laughs> and I won't step outside of that. Why? Because I go backwards. So me taking the two weeks off for the ice bath, for not by choice exactly because I was sick and Tommy said not to. I would have done it, but Tommy said not to. I didn't, but look where I'm at now. Energetically, I've lost the momentum. Mm. And enough discipline over time will create a wave of momentum that pushes you. You've got to get to that point though. And once you do that, it becomes enjoyable. It's almost like, oh, shivers, if I don't do it, I feel weird. That's where you got to get to with this thing. Then you're on the journey to becoming someone different. Because if you don't save the money, so the, on the weekends, if you want more money, save the money from the weekends. Don't buy the alcohol. Don't buy the vapes. Don't buy the – there's so much money to save. But people go, oh, I want to enjoy myself. Okay, well, enjoy yourself and have no money. That's up to you. you got to find the enjoyment in the discipline. Once you do that, you will start to change energetically. You will start to expand your mind because you start to see, oh, I'm, I'm actually becoming someone different now. I can do this. Then it becomes exciting. So the excitement of the goal, the enthusiasm of the goal, which most people let lose over a period of time, if you stay disciplined from the goal setting to the steps, you've got to know what you're doing though. So you've got to source people that know what they're doing. You don't know the path yet. So you've got to find the path. These are the steps. Someone says, like a Tommy, a Mick or somebody, says these are the steps, do that. You do it. Your, your job is the discipline. So you're going to get up every day and not skip a beat. 
If you do, get back on it straight away. Do not let yourself off again. And then you get to a point and the enthusiasm and excitement of setting the goal actually shifts to the excitement and the enthusiasm of the discipline of doing it. That's when you know you've cracked the code. You can achieve anything that you want if you have the right plan and you push yourself in the area of discipline enough. And remember, once you start getting excited about the new disciplined version of you, you're well on your way.